What's up, man? How are you? What's your name? Nice to meet you. Brandon. Brandon. Okay. Uh, what would you say your skill level is, Brandon? Novice to intermediate. Okay. Good. All right. Now, what would you say your sticking points are? Do you understand? Uh, carrying on the conversation. I can, once I get over the initial approach anxiety, it's pretty easy for me to keep, just push myself, especially if I'm throwing wing. Okay. But it's really taking it to the next step. I can get them laughing, talking, but then it's like, where do I go from there? Okay. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, are you approaching, you're approaching at nighttime, right? Usually, yes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's do a quick drill. Do you mind? No. Okay. Ahead. So I'm a girl. I just want you to approach me like it's a nighttime environment. Okay. Okay. Hey, I uh, noticed something interesting about you. Uh, I really like your jacket. Where'd you get it? Uh, Macy's. Macy's? Mm. What do you like about Macy's? Why not Nordstrom's? Uh, Macy's is closer. Closer? Yeah. Okay. Where are you from? LA. LA? Where at in LA? South LA. Okay. I went out to uh, Anaheim once for a trip, but didn't spend too much time in LA. You go to the beaches a lot? Not really. Sometimes. See, I don't, this is where I get stuck when they just kind of give me the one Okay, okay. give them a round, give them a round. <laughs> okay. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay. All right, so what I wanted to show you, and, and what I'm going to do is basically break down your sticking points on this, okay? The reason I asked you what your sticking points are initially is because most people guess at their sticking points, or they base it off of what are my symptoms. It's like if you went to the doctor and you said, hey, um, I think there's something wrong with me, and the doctor says, well, you have cancer, and you're like, no, no, no I have a cough. Like, I have a cough, my throat hurts. It's like, no, no, you have cancer. You have to get ready. No, no, my, my throat hurts, though. Okay, the people are looking at the symptoms, and they're not looking at the underlying issue. They're not looking at what's causing the symptoms. Okay, so uh, the gentleman up here, in, his, in that specific scenario, um, your interaction, the when you approach, your sticking point isn't where to go after your approach. The sticking point is the approach itself. It's the approach and it's the underlying conversation skills. So you said that, oh, I can get her to laugh, uh, you know, and then uh, I don't know where to take it after she's laughing and, and we're engaged. The problem, though, isn't at that point. Because the majority of the time, you're not getting to that point unless the girl is really, really open to you. What's actually happening, the actual sticking point there is you're not able, uh, on, the, on the conversation side, on the social skill level side, uh, the main sticking point there is the conversation itself. Is not, it's not just not knowing where to take it, it's not knowing how to establish a conversation with a random stranger. And you can probably do that with your friends. And most people can do that with their friends. But being able to approach a random stranger and start and continue and keep a conversation going and then push it to the next step, that's a completely separate skill level. So it's not taking it further, it's actually starting the conversation solid to begin with. And the danger in this is that if you went through, say, the next six months, the next 12 months, and you focused on, where do I take it next? You're going to start reading about escalation. You're going to start reading about qualification. You're going to start reading about showing interest when the problem really is all about establishing the conversation from the start. And the more you focused on the symptoms, the more you're going to get away from the problem. And when that problem doesn't get fixed, it festers and it gets worse and you develop bad habits. That is exactly what, gentlemen, why we need a roadmap. That's why we need to know exactly, step by step, on what to do next. Again, this is an example of dating. But if you wanted to be wealthy, and I said, well, what are your sticking points? What's preventing you from being wealthy? And you say, well, um, I haven't uh, met, hit my first, uh, my first million yet. And I would say, well, have you hit your first 50,000? Well, no, but I haven't met my first million, so I'm focusing on making my first million. Again, same <coughs> exact thing. Figure out where the core of that issue lies. Figure out what the next step is to get better because going way far out into the distance and trying to fix those symptoms oftentimes results in you running around in circles, just like on that map, just like when you're driving around in circles and you never achieve your destination. All right, number four, misinformation. Specifically, don't be led or misled by misinformation. So I'm going to give you guys a, a, a quick drill here. All right, I'm going to throw out a bunch of uh, say standard things in the community and I want you guys to tell me which ones are correct and which ones do you think are incorrect. Um, by show of hands I want you to raise your hand every time you hear something that seems correct. Okay. Uh, the first one, you can attract women through DHV stories because they raise your value. Okay. Second one, when you go out to meet women the most important thing is to go out and have fun. Okay. 
Ask for her email first, and then tell her to write her number down too. OK, I guess you guys don't like that one. <laughs> Always be congruent. Okay. Qualification means finding out if she meets your standards. OK, all right, so sum up, sum down. Here's a scary part of misinformation. Misinformation is such, by definition, it's misinformation. You don't know that it's misinformation, because if you did, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be an issue. The scary part about that is that every single one of those things is false. Only you didn't know which one was false and which one was real. So if you continue to make your decisions based on this is true and this is false, then you can see where this is going. The further you go down the line making core decisions that are incorrect, basing it off of assumptions that are incorrect, the more you do that, the more ineffective down the line you become. Your core assumptions, your core presuppositions, the thing that defines everything, the baseline right there, is going to have a ripple effect on every decision you make after that. So your core assumptions better be correct. If my core assumption getting into this is Asian guys that are five foot four cannot get good at this, what would happen? I never would have gotten good at this because everything else would have tried to fall in line with that core assumption. That core assumption would have prevented anything from actually happening. Those core assumptions are things that you have to always be questioning. And you have to make sure that they're correct, because if they aren't, we get exactly what we just got here. We get a lot of assumptions that are wrong, that are con going to continue to haunt your progress, your development, throughout the rest of the time you do this, or that you do anything. That's misinformation. Don't be led by misinformation. Now, brass tacks, how do we fix that then? The first thing is question all of your assumptions about anything. When I took classes on business, when I took classes on how to start a business, on how to create one, how to get one running, the first thing a lot of those classes did is they questioned all of your assumptions about business. How do you feel about business? How do you feel about how it runs? How do you feel about risk? Most people think that starting a business, inherently, we've been trained that starting a business is more risky than working a regular job. That's an assumption a lot of people make. It's an assumption that I made. It's an assumption that's taught to pretty much everybody. But it's an assumption that in a lot of ways is not correct. And if you continue to create that assumption and to strengthen that in your mind, you're not going to create your own business. You're not going to do the things that you want to do because you're going to have this misinformation. And that misinformation is going to lead you astray. So you have to keep that in mind. Step five, be uncomfortable. This is one of the key, key things. You must be uncomfortable. The thing is that, when you're in field, when you're doing whatever, you're building your business, you're going to school, you're doing whatever, whenever you come across a fork in the road, whenever you come across a decision point, do I take decision A or do I take decision B? 